So, first of all, I tried to understand her vision and the scale of the project. It is really important that I ask the right questions and help the client define their vision well enough for me to deliver an amazing result. I don't know how many of you know a game called League of Legends, but she requested a tattoo design of a character called Soraka. But not the default look of the character, but her skin version called Spirit Blossom Soraka. And actually not the design of this character, but of her weapon. She gave me full freedom with this project, which will be a lot of fun for me. She even said that I can sign the tattoo with my name. I feel very honored. I had to go all out with this. Because I have never actually created an illustration for the purpose of getting it tattooed. I wanted to make sure if there is something to keep in mind. I think I have a quite good of an idea what to keep in mind. But just in case I will look up if there are any nuances. So a great way to use AI nowadays. An ethical way is for research to gather information more quickly. So yeah, definitely color palette. If the color should be more vibrant or pastel depending on the skin tone. The size and scale, that's definitely something to think about because the arm isn't a very big canvas placement. I wanted to also wrap around the arm on some parts and make a more cooler dynamic design. I also want to hear what people are genuinely saying about getting tattoos and what to keep in mind. Reddit is a good place for that. People are always bashing on Reddit, but I think it's a good place to get genuine opinions. Tattoo bleed, I think it goes hand in hand with the size and scale and the skin tone. Because she has really light skin, it won't be a big problem. Depending on the skin tone, people look better in either pastel colors or more vibrant colors. For her, I believe it's like in the middle. So that's also something I want to keep in mind when I get to the coloring part. And lastly, I want to make sure uh, if there are any requirements on the format of the file. Probably PNG with transparent background. I can make many different files later. Yeah, I think that's it. With that, we can move on. So for reference, I like to use Pinterest. And who doesn't know yet, there's such a program called PureRef. It is a really good software and it's free. I highly recommend it. So I will be searching Spirit Blossom Soraka. Spirit Blossom Soraka. You can take the original. And so it's so easy, you just copy and paste it here. So you can do stuff like flip it, grayscale mode for a quick value checks, and you can do a lot more with it. Okay, let's keep going. So I finished collecting reference, and I also looked into the lore of Spirit Blossom Soraka. And uh, now we can get to thumbnailing. So for thumbnailing, I just want to try stuff out and make fast iterations. So my brain can start generating better and better ideas. And the main thing I'm focusing on is a good composition and movement. For me, movement is really important and that, I think that's something that describes my art. I like lots of movement and energy in it. So my idea is that there is this wave of cherry blossoms and these lotus-like flowers around the staff. So I was liking this one the most, and I think I want to take this one to the sketch phase. I started off by creating an A4-sized canvas with 300 dpi for a good printing quality. I used an image of the Spirit Blossom Soraka staff to make the proportion part faster, but I did change the shapes a bit to make it more dynamic and interesting. After that, I sketched the lotus flowers in according to my thumbnail. I left one flower out that was facing away. I felt it would hurt the overall shape and readability of the illustration. Also, the Spirit Blossom theme is inspired by the Japanese culture. I left four flowers because number four can be also read she in Japanese meaning death. From the lore we know that Spirit Blossom Soraka guides people through the afterlife. Okay, let's see if she likes it. Now I am doing two things at the same time. I am adding values to the design, but also creating separate layers for each part of the staff. This will enable me later to test out color variations and edits really quickly. 
having the right values is more important than colors, so getting it correct early on is really good. Finally we have arrived at the final step of the illustration, rendering. Here I will do final tweaks, corrections, coloring and texture. But of course, rendering is so much more than that, but we cannot go over everything in this video. I will talk briefly about textures here. Texture is another layer of what makes something believable. For example, the golden metal part of the staff. Imagine if it would not be as glossy, it would maybe feel like plastic. So giving the extra information helps with believability. If you have enjoyed the video thus far, then maybe consider liking the video to push it to more people. And if you are interested in improving in art and as an artist, find your own voice, learn from my journey, see how I create projects and what goes into it, then also please consider subscribing. I sent the final result to my client and she loved it. So that went well, what I learned from this project is that do not get lazy with the layering. I definitely created some extra work for myself with that. If you want to know how I started feeling free about my art, how I avoid burnout and anxiety, then make sure to watch this video next.